Hello, you guys. Oh, is that is that crappy documentary still around the corner? Oh God, is it still there? Oh shit. Well, people, the day has has finally come. Oh yes, the day it, it has come. I am going to review, in my eyes, probably the shittiest documentary, although it's an interesting one. Some of you may not remember, some of you might not remember, that I said at one point in life, as I was making videos, although at one point I stopped and I was like, I need to get motivation. Am I going to read a motivational book? Am I going to get a motivational tape? Well, we know that the late comedian, stand-up comedian George, Col uh, George Carlin would say, if you're going somewhere to buy a motivation tape or a motivation book, you, my friend, have motivation. So return that goddamn book, tell the book teller, go fuck themselves. I have motivation to do something. <sighs> Alas, I do. And I'm going to go through the mess. I'm going to review the documentary that is really bad in my eyes as it looks like a goddamn high school project that they were like, oh, this is going to be great, when in fact some of the stuff is more myth than fact, which is just lovely. Even the man himself and some of the interviews he's had, I guess you could say, with a YouTuber I love the most, The Glarer. Yeah, that guy is cool. He, he's really cool. He needs all the love he can get. Um... But yes, I am going to review the Fly Cold Fly documentary. The, the, the documentary that helps me take shits because, um, well, take dumps mainly, because there are loads of problems with it, and I look at it and go, God damn, and this shit was on Netflix? I was like, oh, the first time I ever saw it, I was like, yeah, this will be interesting. I saw it on YouTube. I watched it. I was like, oh, okay, what is this? First thing in the opening thing, I see someone running away. Then there's a police chase. Oh, wait. I didn't even get to how it all starts. Well, it starts with a dude, okay? It starts with a dude. Uh, it starts with this dude who's six foot five. He's seventeen years old. The guy's name's Colton Harris Moore. Okay, he's at a halfway home. Leaves it. Okay. Finds a car. The first thing we see in this documentary, he steals a vehicle, gets into a police chase, then crashes it after just shortly before jumping out of the vehicle. And then you see the car crash, and he runs away. But here's the thing. There's a part to that where pretty much I can already tell you animation error number one right there. Because I don't know who thought of this idea, but somebody on that crew when they were doing the animation said like, oh, let's have, uh, I guess, a subtle hint of, I don't know what it was, but I assume, well, I'm already going to go ahead and say it's a an full-blown animation error and go, okay, this is an animation error right here, because uh, we see, I'm not sure if it was, I guess, supposed to be his spine popping through out of his back. Oh, that's, ugh, creeped me out. Um, but it looks like the audience gets mooned. Literally, they're getting mooned right now, so it's like, oh, oh my god, that... That kind of was like, oh, hell no. That's like the last thing I want to see in the documentary. I, this, I don't want to see some animated dude's ass. Like, really? I don't want to see a butt crack. Like, goddamn, I worked in retail at the time. I saw this, and oh, Jesus. There were customers I were helping where it was the old plumber situation. Oh, Jesus. Oh, that just creeped me out. Oh. Am I scarred for life? No, but there are many more animation errors in this documentary to come. And now we're getting into the part where I sometimes lose track of, wait, wait, who are we talking about now? Because more people are being introduced. There's a sheriff. 
some random old lady, the dude's mom, and then a hippie. What the fuck? A hippie? Why do we need to know about the hippie? I, I don't want to know about the hippie. I'm just here for the one dude. Why the fuck do I care about the hippie? I don't care about the hippie. Like, literally, I don't care for the hippie. Like, seriously. And now we're learning, oh, he's barking into places. And they're saying, oh, he has a bunch of credit cards. And he's using the credit cards to buy packages and stuff, things from the internet. And then he goes to the house where the thing goes and then steals it. But there's a problem that's been, some of that stuff has been disproven. And how do you play video games in the woods anyhow? Um... If you have watched some of the interviews the glare has had with this dude, it's pretty much like, that's not true. I wasn't playing video games in the woods. And that's what that's the hilarious thing, because it's like, how do you play video games in the woods? I got a big generator out in my garage that would not be able to... It requires four people to carry this thing. So it's like... Flight simulator games at that time... I've done some research, they weren't the best. No. Remember, this is the early... This is like 2008, 2009, man. Not many things in terms of gaming and simulators are as good as they are, say, now. They look very realistic in terms of graphics, and that's what makes it cool. Um... But other than that, they just mentioned some things that I don't think need to be mentioned in a documentary at all. Like, for example, why would I want to know if he was watching porn in the woods? Yes, you heard me correct. They even said, oh, he made illicit purchases with these stolen credit cards, including, but not limited to, but porn. It's like, I don't think we need to know that. And porn? No. I thought at first they said, and more, and I was like, wait, what? No pun intended, by the way. I rewind it a little bit, and I hear, and porn. I was like, oh. Even people in the comments section had caught it. Although it was uploaded by someone else. I think it's, uh, the channel is called, what is it, Real Crime? Which, that's, that's good. But... I don't need a therapist. Hmm. Sorry about that. I got a notification from my phone. I guess it, I guess my mic somehow caught that. Weird. But it's like, no one, number one, nobody cares. Like, we don't need to know if he was looking at, you know, some hentai in the woods. I don't, I don't give a shit about that whatsoever. Like, that should not be in a documentary. And that just, like, like, really? Do we really need to mention that? Um, and another thing when it comes up to animation errors, I noticed at least a good four times we get mooned by the animated Colton. It's not just lovely. And the, the, not to mention that they had an actual live actor. He was okay, but towards the end of the thing, he's like drawing something in the sand. And he's like, oh, this would be a good time to do what I think the real dude was doing. Here, I'll just sag my pant, uh, my shorts a little bit so everyone can see my underwear. Yeah, that, that's a great idea. And I hope that I can see the director like now. He's hearing this from the live actor. He's like, I got a great idea, man. How about I sag my pants a little bit so people can see my underwear as I'm drawing in the sand? Yeah, that's a great idea. That's probably the director. He's like, I like that. That's true rebellion right there. But ultimately, all I gotta say is, when it comes to documentaries, there's good ones, there's bad ones. And Fly Cold Fly is definitely one of the not-so-good ones. With animation errors riddling it, and animated Colton mooning the viewers, in which I counted at least a good four times, the most hilarious thing about this documentary is that some of the stuff in it mentioned at all, really. The Barefoot stuff isn't true. Law enforcement is just... They have said that's not even true. Even the man himself said that's not true. Um, 
So it's like, why even make the documentary as a whole? Like, resources were used to make this high school grade looking goddamn documentary and it, it is just bad because literally now when I look at the thumbnail which will be a part of this video it's a cool drawing it looks like someone is getting ready to fly with the song in the background in their goes over Disneyland Stuka's over Disneyland. Come on, sing with me. It's one of the Dickies' coolest songs. These are the people who made the song for Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Cause when I, cause when I see the some the thumbnail, it looks like a Power Rangers villain in the making, in my sole opinion. And I'm not kidding when I say. I see Rita Repulsa and her husband Lord Zed going make my monster grow <laughs> cause it's like I see this documentary as a goddamn joke I see it as a joke and I, th I see it as some very crappy documentary that in my eyes was hastily put together based on a book some things that are based on a book usually don't go well Although some movies have. I wouldn't even call this a movie. This looks like a high school project that was hastily put together in drama class or history class. But all in all, the storytelling is okay, but the documentary as a whole looks like a low budget. It looks low budget, legitimately, at times. And today, honestly, you're never going to hear... A story on the news of somebody stealing five airplanes it's just never gonna happen again and thank God for that because um, nowadays people um, I've noticed there's a lot of people with um, air 15s nowadays that that's probably not true and I hope it isn't but if they hear oh somebody stealing small engine airplanes they're gonna be probably like oh is that it is that him? Shoot that dude out of the air, and then you're gonna hear, "Man mistaken for a person shooting, uh, stealing airplanes was shot out of the air and killed by a bunch of random hooligans on the ground with AR-15s and pistols going into the nighttime air like it was World War II with AA guns." Yeah. But another hilarious thing in throughout media, it's one uh, one I, I get giggles out of this when I see this. Uh, the show Pokemon literally has two groups of people for Team Rocket named after famous outlaws. Um, you've got the the two people, for example, Jesse and James, named after the outlaw Jesse James from Missouri, out of all places. Oh, that's cool. Dang that. I live in Missouri, that's a hilarious thing, and we got a dude who's, uh, whose name is being used for two different characters in a, a TV show, that's so cool. And then you got Cassidy and Butch, who's named after the outlaw, Butch Cassidy, another famous outlaw. But the hilarious thing is I wouldn't be surprised in Pokemon if there was a group of three males, and their names were Harris, Colton, and Moore. Like, Jesus, like the... Like, there's a fat one, his name is Harris. And then a tall one. But he's he's wearing glasses, and is, like, nervous at times. He's like, I don't know, I don't think we should take Pokemon. His name will be Colton, and then the, the really short one, who's like, I don't know, middle, middle school or size would be more. That would be his name. That the, the, the really short one would be more. And it's like, I'm surprised Pokemon had never did it, but I wouldn't be surprised if they did, and it never went mainstream. Because it's like, if they're able to do it with some of these these two other outlaws, who's to say they wouldn't do it with this one person? Um, besides me going on this big rant, um, the whole documentary as a whole is just like, it gets boring at times, it gets like, okay, 
he's going into a vacation home now. What is he going to do? What is he going to use the toilet? He's going to watch TV. Is he going to watch Monday Night Raw? Or something. Eat. Oh, wait. There's one scene where he's conversing with that hippie again that we don't care about. We don't care uh, care about whatsoever. I I can't speak today. That is mainly because I don't have one of my cats laying on me. Like every single time I do a video, I have one of my cats laying on me. And uh, I'm in the midst of a coffee high right now. That was a really good cup of coffee, but maybe I put a little too much... I don't know if it's possible... Espresso. Because I have the power! Unlimited power! Right now, coursing through my veins! But throughout the documentary, until he finally disappears, zitbag... That's like my favorite line from the game Bully, right there. Um, the hippie. Yes. Hippie and the Hamburglar. But it's like, I don't know why I just said Hamburglar. But honestly, the documentary as a whole is just something I would never watch. Looks like a high school project. And now I often wonder... It gets boring at times, like I said, and then it goes. It gets weird at times as well. For example, I don't think viewers would really want to know if he was watching porn in the woods. It's like I still don't understand who would bring that up. But towards the end, it gets more interesting. Oh, more things are being stolen. More cars, boats, some boats and stuff. But five airplanes in total. Wow, that's crazy. Um. What, can, what else can I remember from this terrible, terrible, no good, very bad documentary that gives me a headache like Read of Repulse against? Oh, I have such a headache! Oh! <laughs> ah. But now we're finally, and as I watch the documentary, it's like, oh, Jesus. Finally, we're getting somewhere. Ah, what is this? Some action. Wow. Now he's just running around. It's like he's running around. And it's like, what are you running from? It's just some dudes in a boat. Ain't nobody gonna freaking kill you. It's like, shit. Although, you wouldn't really know that. And you are in the... Like, you go all the way to the Bahamas. And now they're getting into a scene. It's like, he's running in... He's running to the water like he's freaking that one main guy from Baywatch running into the water. Oh, yes, I know who it is. David Hasselhoff. <laughs> and now we see this part of the documentary where it's like the live actor who's being called on it. He's running to the freaking water like he's David Hasselhoff. We. It's like, do we really need to know that? Do we really need to see that? No, but I guess... The directors knew it's like, oh, this shit's getting boring. We need to add something. I don't know. May not be true, but something. Now we're finally getting to the end where this horror show, this this show, this bad documentary is coming to an end with um with that pirate dude from SpongeBob just going, that's it. Like, like that's it. Um, like, like, is that seriously it? Yes, that's it. Because now we're going into even more stuff that's a myth. Now he's in a boat that he somehow swam to at a dock and stole, and now is running away from some random people in another boat chasing him, and now here comes the police. Whoop, whoop. That's the sound of the police. Whoop, whoop. Yay. Because it's like... Mm, I'm just watching this for the first time. I'm like... Uh-huh. Well, there, it's getting tense now. 
But the funniest thing is, like, now we have another animation error, and this happens. It's like, it's coming, the boats, he's looking, he's turning, looking over his shoulder. He's like, oh my god, I'm being chased, what do I do? No one ever thinks, it's like, okay, how do you stop other boats? <gasps> have you ever heard of whale wars? Just just throw some netting out into the water. Yeah, it'll foul the propellers, and it'll stop them. No one ever thought of that. Wah, wah, wah. Nobody ever thinks of that. This dude never thought it. Wow, that's an amazing idea. No one ever thinks it. But, um... Honestly, it, it finally comes to an end, and then here comes to an, it comes to another part where it's not even true. Running aground. Apparently, that was a myth, and I'm not surprised because it looked a bit the, the the portrayal looked a bit dramatic because the boat just comes to a complete stop because you hear a boom. You hear the thud of the boat just hitting this underwater sandbar. And then here goes Animated Colton going, slamming straight into the frickin' forehead and, like, head first, straight into the steering wheel. It's like, see, if that actually happened, I'm not a doctor, but that's a concussion right there. And somebody's gonna... <laughs> How are you not flying over the steering wheel out of the boat and, like through, like, I guess those things have a windshield or window. Hey, look at that, it's turning into night. Which is how this scene takes place. Somewhat early, early hours, but somewhat like this. And I'm just standing on this random sunken structure in the middle of the water. And it's like, here comes up a, another myth. The boat is stuck. And now they're like, oh, well, he, he put a gun up against his head. It's like he's saying he was going to kill himself. He didn't want to go back. That's another thing that was disproven. Great job, documentary. You're already boring. And it's terrible at times. It looks extremely low budget. Uh, we have random people talking. Uh, random, like, actual people talking. Um, and a hippie. Yes, don't forget the hippie. The hippie. Who legitimately looks like a rejected McDonald's character. Like, seriously? Do, do we have to add this to the documentary? I guess the, the director was like, Yes, we must. We must add this. We need to add other boring things. And things that make zero sense. Like... Nothing was ever really explained that well. And now we're towards the end. And now we see this farce of two things that were never true, but the boat was shot at. And the weirdest thing of all time was, yeah, the engines were shot out. And he finally surrendered. Put his hands up. I surrender. And it's like, that's it? Now we cut to actual footage of him being dragged away. Wearing these Air Jordans. Where did those come from? Jesus Christ. Um, I assume those are Air Jordans. Like, where did those come from? Why am I in the middle of the ocean? I don't freaking know. Like, I don't know. I'm waiting for the Bismarck to pick me up. And it's nowhere because it was sunk. And there's an iceberg over there. Man, that iceberg is big. It's not really big, it's very small. But now we're finally to the end of this terrible documentary. There are some things I left out because I find it legitimately boring as hell. And just poorly made. Like... Oh, Lord. Thank God. Like, there was, what was it, a movie in the works, allegedly, with about Colton. It's like, oh, God. 
if the documentary was bad, the movie was going to be even worse. And if it was, it was either going to be, allegedly it was either going to be live action or animated. Honestly, if it's animated, might as well do something comedic and hilarious, like, I don't know, like a, a fan fiction, like, a, what is it, I, I know, like an Evil Dead, um, like, fan film, there you go, and it's all animated, yeah, that, that sounds good, it'll be called Rise of the, right, I can't, I can't even freaking think. I can't think today. What's going on? What's going on with me? Oh, what is it? Aha, yes. Rise of the Army of Darkness. There we go. And well, just like, yeah, there's going to be plot holes, but it's like, Colson finds the Necronomicon and gets sent back to not the year 1300, it's World War One, and then he's got to find the Necronomicon again. Beat the new demon, I guess you could call him. The Trickster. And just like the Army of Darkness movie, he's got to face his evil twin that was created by the Kendarian demon. Ooh, yes. And we will have... I'll spoil those good looks! And it's like, just... I would like to see that. That'd be cool. Like, that'd be really cool. But all in all, back to the documentary. It finally ends. It tells you how long he was sentenced. It said, seven years in prison. I'm like, okay. And then we finally, we learn some more things at the ending credits. And a very terrible song. The music throughout this was terrible. And it sounded like they ripped off like the drum thing from the song Rock and Roll All Night Rock and Roll All Night and Party Every Day by Kiss. It sounds like they legitimately ripped it off. And I don't know how whoever it was that made this damn documentary in the first place was not sued by Kiss. Like, Jesus Christ. There is a drum beat in this documentary that literally sounds like the beginning drum beat from uh, Rock and Roll All Night and Party Every Day by Kiss. Literally. But now we, we get to the do we're in the, we're at the, at the end of the documentary. Yay! This shit show is over! It's over! My Pain. Oh, goodness Christ. I have a, a Rita Repulsa grade headache. Oh, I have such a headache. Oh, I can just hear Goldar now shouting, Deal with it! Oh, Lord. I can just hear him saying that. Like, seriously. And now it's like, And now a word from Colton's defense attorney. It's like, we have this whole paragraph, he's like, he just wants you all to know he's not proud of what he did and wasn't happy at all or something like that. So I don't even remember what it said, but somebody will probably put it in the comment section where it said. I don't remember, but it's like... Then you're like, oh, what's the attorney's name? Oh, John Henry Brown? Ted Bundy's defense attorney? Oh, shit. Finally, it's like if you look at his career, it's like I think it's mostly murderers. He's had to be their defense attorneys for. I guess this was his fresh breath air. It's like like a, a breath of fresh air. Oh, finally, I, I have someone who's not a goddamn killer. Wait, what? Oh. Um. That's crazy, but I'll take the job. I'll do it. But anyways, the documentary just ends after some crappy music from Drew Kelly, not not the. It turns out there's two different people. There's a, I think there's a, there's a a black male named Drew Kelly, and he's a singer. And there's a white dude who looks like a hippie again. Oh, lovely. Named Drew Kelly, and that song. Oh God, at the end, just is terrible. 
like Jesus the the song centerfold could be better at the end angel is centerfold my blood runs cold my memory has just been sold do 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 do, do. angel is centerfold like just have that at the end like why not that I think it certainly works although some people disagree and I will I respect that you know if you disagree I respect that some other people don't respect you know disagreements but I would respect that you know I, I respect everyone's opinions you know I always will like you just gotta have that you know if you wanna be able to I guess have a like a really good debate you gotta be able to respect another person's opinion like you can't be offended at everything it's like is that what this whole like time like right now is it's like people being offended I don't know what's going on in this country anymore it's confusing no wonder I get Rita Repulsa great headaches but anyways this documentary it came to an end and the good guys in the form of the Bahamian Royal Police they did something along with the Navy I think they did something the United States couldn't do the, the police literally and the FBI they couldn't do it we literally like the only reason Colton was caught in the first place was because literally the police in the Bahamas had to give him to us on like a freaking silver platter like the American police couldn't get him and instead these people in the Bahamas had to do it and this is like in my honest opinion this is the most embarrassing thing for the country of all time. It's like, sure, he outsmarted the police, but at the same time, you can be smarter than the person to whom you're chasing after. Like, you just gotta have common sense. And if you know the person is stealing airplanes and cars and boats, it's like, especially airplanes, and this is the post 9 11 era. Like, gee, some odd years before, on September the 11th, 2001, planes were being hijacked and were being taken over. And it's like, we're in that post-era now, and now somebody is stealing airplanes, and they're not, he's not crashing them into things, but is stealing them. And it's like, and this couldn't have been stopped right then and there? Like, Jesus Christ. Superman is much smarter than most American cops on the road today. Like, Jesus. And now this documentary is over. Thank God. And now, we can get to my ending credits. So that'll be it for today's review. And the... Like... If I had to give this an overall rating, I'd give it 1 out of 10. Because the way I see it is there, in my sole opinion, there was more comedy than there was facts, and there was more myth than there was facts. So, that's how I see it. But anyways, that'll be it. For the end of today's video and if you like today's video be sure to hit the like subscribe yeah be sure to like subscribe share with family and friends hit that notification bell so you can get a another uh, so you know when the other video comes out gosh I, I feel so blasted no I'm just kidding I just I feel disappointed I feel like review bra or um, whatever that youtuber's name is like where he goes my disappointment is immeasurable my day is ruined that's how I feel about this documentary because it's like I was like okay this is gonna be interesting because this was like in 2021 I'm just sitting in my recliner and I see this documentary I was like oh okay I like history I play it and I'm like 
what the hell did I just watch? Because, um, the animation errors are all over. <laughs> They're all over the place. It's like, oh god, there are times where the animated Colton has no goddamn eyebrows. Or worse, he doesn't have a face. No face. Or he's missing his eyes. Like his eyes were gouged out and were eaten by that one of those monsters. What is What movie is it where they have those monsters that eat people's eyes? I don't know what it's called, but yeah. That'll be it for today. And then video two will be coming after this. And as one YouTuber put it, we shall do this very soon again, my friends. And, uh... My home team, the Blues, will be playing tonight, so that'll be awesome. So, let's go, Blues, and oh god, I cannot wait to scrub this terrible documentary out of my head. Goodbye, all... Goodbye, everyone. Oh, I'm relieved. This bad documentary is over. And Blues fans, are you ready to destroy the Dallas Stars tonight? Yes, I'm sure ready. Yep, yep. Let's go, Blues. And I will see you for video number two.